Okay, we're back. It's been quite a while. I think a good, what, two months since our last episode. We're on to uh, Radio Spoil episode 21. We're going to focus on another true crime case. Unlike previous cases we've covered, this case is not about a missing person, uh, nor is it unsolved, which is what we most concentrate on when we do uh, true crime in fact uh, last month may 2022 this case actually reached its court jury conclusion now we're not doing our usual deep dive timeline analysis that we've done with other cases like the gabby petito case other cases um this is more a critical summary of the aspects of this particular case how do i describe this it's um bizarre it's still an intriguing case my interest in this case came about because it touches on many subjects and feels uh, my YouTube channel covers, um, as some of you know, writing, publishing, self-publishing, uh, media, media attention, how media deals with uh, topics and cases in, in profile, and uh, and also obviously I cover true crime. Uh, this one, wow. This one hit all the spots, and um, this one was not a not a case I could ignore. So, without further ado, let's go to the case against Nancy Crampton Brophy and the murder of Daniel Brophy in twenty eighteen. After a first marriage and divorce, Daniel Brophy met and dated Nancy Crompton, and romance blossomed between the pair. They married in early 1990s and eventually set up home in Oregon, United States. Daniel was a chef and Nancy worked in several fields before focusing on on a writing career with non-fiction articles published in trade journals and technical writing for human resource departments. By 2003, she joined her local chapter of Romance Writers of America and learned the craft of story writing. Soon, she switched to her real passion romantic suspense novels. Her stories are about pretty men and strong women, about families that don't always work and about the joy of finding love and the difficulty of making it stay. By 2011 she had become a highly prolific novelist, winning minor awards and embraced the successful realm of self-publishing, Amazon ebooks, and a growing social media fan following through her author website. All seemed well, success beckoned for both. Her husband Daniel, a chef, eventually began teaching at the Oregon Culinary Institute during the week and sometimes on weekends. His time off from work ranged from feeding the chickens, gardening, to hunting and foraging for the local forests for mushrooms. But like in all marriages, life wasn't always perfect. Nancy reflected on their 26 plus year marriage and said on, their, on her author blog website, like all marriages, we've had her ups and downs, more good times than bad. 
Most recently, we have spent 14 nail-biting months living in an apartment while our house was rebuilt from a house fire. In the process, I have acquired an in-depth knowledge of kitchen cabinets, bathroom plumbing fixtures and leaking roofs. If this writing thing doesn't work out, I plan to investigate becoming a contractor who specialises in on-time, under-budget remodels. Believe me, there is a fortune to be made by the builder who can deliver on his promises. Maybe the self-publishing gravy train wasn't quite what she imagined, no matter how prolific a novelist she was. But dedicated she was. Plot storylines and research were critical. If you're going to write a series of novels about murder and suspense, the details have to ring true. Addressing her reader fan base, Nancy goes on to state, As a romantic suspense writer, I spend a lot of time thinking about murder and consequently about police procedure. After all, if murder is supposed to set me free, I certainly don't want to spend any time in jail. She published a 700 word essay on C. Jane Publish. It listed five motives and the kinds of weapons a romance novelist would choose from if she was to write about a character killing her spouse. Her novel series includes the titles The Wrong Husband and The Wrong Lover. On the morning of Saturday, June 2nd, 2018, Daniel Brophy left home for work at the Oregon Culinary Institute, where he was a teacher. He had some teaching materials to carry into work, packed in boxes. He parked his pickup truck close to the institute and close to where he always parked as a creature of habit. He raised the security shutters and entered the building shortly after 7am and turned off the alarm. He busied himself preparing for the day and his teaching classes that morning. Not long after, he would be shot twice. Once in the back and the second shot through his heart. Critically wounded. He may never have known if he knew his attacker when the final shot was fired at close range, bleeding and dying. Later students arrived and found Daniel's body on the floor in a kitchen, dead from the two gunshot wounds. The death was investigated when law enforcement arrived and they immediately declared a homicide. The next day, Nancy Brophy published an emotional Facebook post asking friends to withhold condolence, phone calls, because she was overwhelmed. She asked friends and family to please save phone calls for a few days until I can function. After a long investigation on a case that lacked direct forensic evidence linking a suspect Nancy Crompton Brophy was formally arrested on September the 5th, 2020. She had remained in custody at Inverness Jail in Northeast Portland ever since until her trial in May 2022. From the outset, suspicion always fell on Daniel Brophy's wife Nancy. She had told investigators during the initial investigation that she had merely walked the dogs and had a share on the morning of the incident 
when her husband earlier had woken and went to work at the Oregon Culinary Institute. She stayed in bed before he left and there was a brief conversation about a leaking tap downstairs. Oregon prosecutors with mounting circumstantial evidence realised that Nancy Brophy's account of her movements that morning were simply not adding up and they could find no other primary suspect in the case. While prosecutors could not tie Nancy Brophy within the crime scene that morning, they spent many months pulling her alibi apart and unravelled a devious plot concerning the purchase of gun kit parts, CCTV coverage and insurance policies taken out. During and after the investigation and when Nancy Brophy was presented with evidence by police she denied the charge of murder and insisted she had no memory of being there, the Oregon Culinary Institute. Yet, police had discovered security footage which put her close to the scene of the crime, watching her husband's entry at a time she claimed she was at their home. Nancy would later claim that she was there scouting for ideas for her upcoming novel and that she may have popped out that morning to grab a coffee, which she just probably forgot about during original questioning by detectives. Prior to her arrest, investigators found traffic camera footage showing Nancy driving to and then departing from the culinary school during a 13 minute window when the homicide happened. Nancy would later amend her story and said she had no memory of such a drive and that she was likely on a coffee run that she simply forgot about due to the stress of the day's events. After more intense questioning Nancy Brophy finally admitted to buying a pistol, a pistol kit and a slide and barrel for a Glock gun prior to the murder. She said it was for her husband to protect himself when he went mushroom hunting in the woods. When you go down to the woods in Oregon, there are many things you need to be careful of. The rough terrain, ensuring you bring food and water, maybe it's a hot day, tell your loved ones where you are going. But Daniel, an avid gardener and hunter forager for mushrooms in the woods, brings a gun for things like, uh, I don't know. You might bring a gun for bears, wild cats. Hey, you might even believe that the Yeti's out there in Oregon. But hey, the mushrooms, they're not homicidal maniacs. And you don't go there with a gun to protect yourself from homicidal mushrooms. At trial it was clear Nancy Brophy had left her home on June the 2nd long before she claimed to walk the dogs or pop out for a, a Starbucks coffee. Forgotten but remembered when presented with CCTV before starting her writing day at 9am. Ultimately, she was tracking 
and following the movements of her husband that morning, driving around town and parking in a place to watch her husband enter his place of work. The prosecution assembled a case built on circumstantial evidence and stated that Nancy was the murderer. They said her faulty initial story alibi of the morning of the incident indicated her account of events was untrustworthy from motive prosecutors alleged that she killed her husband for several life insurance policies totaling, totaling around 1.5 million and she was in some financial distress at the time. Forensic evidence indicated that Daniel Brophy had been pierced by two bullets from a Glock pistol. The prosecution entered evidence that Miss Brophy had purchased a ghost gun kit of parts with an internet purchase. Nancy Brophy conceded that she had indeed bought a slide and barrel for a Glock pistol on eBay. She argued that the purchase had been made with her husband's support and that she had given it to her husband to protect himself from looking for mushrooms and that the gun components were actually for research on a new novel involving a woman who carefully acquired gun parts. Brophy's defence argued that Nancy, being at the Culinary Institute, would be unusual at that early time, and that her movements were nothing more than coincidental circumstances based on evidence. However, the prosecution presented evidence that Nancy Brophy was very familiar with her husband's work facility being there several times and just three weeks before she had turned up at his workplace unexpected, positing it as a dry run and research preparation for the two weekend she had targeted on the calendar to carry out the murder before his teaching semester was over. During Brophy's time incarceration at a medium security facility after arrest in 2020, she allegedly accidentally said a bit too much to a fellow inmate. You know, hey, that's the problem. Reuters can never stop talking about their research on their next project. Despite challenges, the inmate was allowed to give trial testimony. Defence attorney Kristen Weinmiller argued there would have to be a significant investigation if Jacobs was allowed to appear as a rebuttal witness after the defence rested their case. It's just simply too late after they've rested to bring in another witness of this magnitude, she said. In April, the inmate was tracked down by authorities and identified as Andrea Jacobs. Jacobs later appeared at trial, claiming she was a reluctant witness and not a jail snitch. She recounted a conversation with Nancy Brophy in prison where the accused had discussed the shooting of her husband at the Oregon Culinary Institute and quote she had just been this far apart by gesture when she shot him nancy realizing her pronoun slip immediately corrected herself to the third person the shooter in closing arguments nancy brophy's defense said that Nancy Brophy loved her husband. You can see that in her eyes every time she talked about him. Her eyes lit up. They absolutely twinkled. The prosecution argued 
much like her suspense romance novels, that Nancy Brophy had been planning the murder of her husband for a considerable time and for financial gain. On May 25th, 2022, a Portland, Oregon jury spent eight hours considering this case and convicted Nancy Crompton Brophy for the fatal shooting of her husband, 63-year-old Daniel Brophy, on a second degree murder charge. Nancy Crompton Brophy's defence team have stated that they will appeal the second degree murder conviction. Brophy faces life imprisonment and will be sentenced in June, July this year pending court submissions. Okay, I hope you uh, appreciated that. Thank you for joining me on episode 21 of Radio with Spoil. Uh, yeah, if you like this episode on YouTube, uh, the various podcasts on iTunes, uh, SoundCloud and Spotify, wherever you found us, I always ask, doesn't cost anything, give us a like, follow, hit the bell notification on YouTube. Uh, I'll be back soon with other cases and um, yeah that was one of those cases where and I always look at media and how they deal with cases and I felt this case was dealt very much as we often see as a source of in media entertainment with little focus really on the facts and what was going on with the case um yeah that's what often happens uh, it's why i choose deliberately despite people asking me privately to cover this case that case it's why I don't cover cases like offhand I can think of Madeleine McCann it's why I don't cover cases like uh, Summer Wells it's why I don't cover cases like uh well the most recent case everybody talks about um johnny depp and amber heard i i don't cover cases like that they become a farce they become a media exchange and circus and i i i, I don't do that stuff Okay. Either did or didn't enjoy this video. I hope it at least opened your eyes. Um until the next episode. Take care. God bless. Let's be good to each other. <laughs>